Please rise for the procession of President Catherine McClymond and the Platform Party.
to the investiture of Dr. Catherine McClymond as the 18th president of Oglethorpe University. It is my privilege to serve as chair of the Oglethorpe Trustee Board of Trustees at such a historic time. We gather today as a university community made up of students, alumni, faculty, staff, supporters, trustees, former presidents, former faculty members, and family to officially invest Dr. McClymond with the role and responsibility as president of this 189-year-old institution. Thank you to our alumni who are representing their classes, including Mr. Jim Clower Sr., who is here on behalf of the class of 1958. Welcome, Jim. We are so glad to have you in our lineup of alumni delegates. We are especially grateful to the delegates from the sister institutions across Georgia and across the country. We appreciate you joining us today to show your support for Oglethorpe and for Dr. McClyman. 
I want to take a moment to say a special word of gratitude to Dr. McClyman's family who are here with us. Will you please stand and let us show our appreciation for you sharing Dr. McClyman with us, please. So we have with us Dr. McClyman's husband, Dr. Michael Herb, her children, Akeel Herb and Sarah McClyman, her mother, Gretchen Shank, her mother-in-law, Margaret Herb, her brother, Jim Teague, and his wife, Linda, and their two sons, Daniel and Andrew. Welcome. The investiture ceremony is an academic tradition that dates back to the Middle Ages. The tradition takes an additional meaning for us today because it represents a significant milestone at Oglethorpe. We will invest Dr. Catherine McClyman as the first female president of Oglethorpe <laughs> University. We are fortunate to have a leader who is so accomplished and so prepared to lead us into the future. She is who we need at this moment. Now as we honor President McClyman and celebrate our beloved Oglethorpe University, I will turn the podium over to speakers representing students, staff, faculty, and alumni. But first, a big thank you to the alumni, donors, faculty, staff, community leaders, and trustees of Oglethorpe. We are grateful for your service, your generosity, and your support that has made this day possible. And now we will hear from a student representative, staff representative, faculty representative, and alumni representative who will bring greetings and a special charge to Dr. McClymont. Hello, I am David Martinez, President of the Student Government Association at Oglethorpe University. On behalf of the SGA and the entire student body, it is my honor to bring greetings and a charge to our new president, Dr. Katherine McClyman. To our special guests, I offer a warm welcome and our gratitude for joining in this celebration. To Dr. McClyman, I offer you the support of the SGA and the students of Oglethorpe University. Dr. McClyman, ever since you came to campus as provost, the students could tell that you cared about us. And when you were named interim president, you showed up for us in important ways. You invited us to your office and hosted us for lunches to hear what was on our minds. You attended our plays and concerts, applauding our performances and offering kind words of support. You were there at our athletic games, cheering us on. You lifted us up when we lost and celebrated when we won. You have been out in the community, telling our story to leaders and donors who are supporting our education. And when the Board of Trustees removed the word interim from your title, you went even further to make time for the students. Dr. McClyman, all we ask is that you continue to listen, continue to advocate for us, and continue to show up for us in all the important ways that will help us achieve our personal and professional goals. We charge you to continue to model good leadership and inspire us to follow in your footsteps. On behalf of the students of Oglethorpe, I want to express our gratitude for giving your whole self to the task of leading this university. We look forward to working together with you to achieve your vision of making Oglethorpe Atlanta's premier undergraduate learning experience. Thank you.
morning. My name is Luttrell Langston, and I am the associate director, the assistant director of facilities. I'm also a member of staff council. It is my privilege to speak to you today on behalf of the staff at Oglethorpe. For me, working at Oglethorpe is a labor of love. We respect the university's mission and we are dedicated to the students that are here. I was so inspired by serving on staff here that I decided to complete my bachelor's degree at Oglethorpe. I was so proud to walk across that stage in commencement this past May, shake President McClyman's hand, and receive my diploma as an Oglethorpe graduate. As both a staff member and now a graduate, I am honored to be here today speaking in support of President McClyman. As a leader, she has a vision for this university. She has been clear and unwavering in sharing that vision and encouraging us to rise to the challenge. As a person, she has a heart for others. She seeks to remove obstacles and provides opportunities to grow in our career. As a teacher, she sees the potential in each of us. She delivers the right mix of encouragement and accountability to help us perform at our best. As a president, she communicates frequently and openly. She creates a sense of community and belonging that makes being on staff so rewarding. President McClyman, we are grateful for the opportunity to serve alongside you. Our charge to you is to continue to raise the bar of expectations and identify areas where we can perform at a higher level of service to our mission. Thank you for leading with integrity and congratulations on achieving this special milestone. My name is Dr. Janelle Pham. I'm an associate professor of sociology. On behalf of the Oglethorpe University faculty, I welcome you all to this special ceremony. Like all institutions of higher education, Oglethorpe is home to its own unique set of traditions, such as Boar's Head and the Battle of Bloody Marsh, as well as formal academic ceremonies, such as convocation and commencement. However, the investiture stands apart, not just as an exceptional event, but one that calls together the community to mark a new chapter in the university's history and leadership. Each day the faculty come to campus, we engage in important work. This work isn't simply the transfer of knowledge, but a quest for truth and understanding. As educators, we support and encourage our students to wrestle with new ideas, share their unique perspectives, and engage with each other. As faculty, we are also engaged in this process of academic and personal growth, learning as much from our students as they hopefully learn from us. This is the vocation that we have devoted our lives to, and we recognize that same commitment in Dr. McClyman. She is a teacher at heart. She embodies the care for students and the respect for ideas that comes from 25 plus years in the classroom. Dr. McClyman, we, the faculty of Oglethorpe, charge that as you grow in your leadership of this institution, you find ways to continue to satisfy your love of teaching. That you remember the thrill of a student grasping a new idea and think of how Oglethorpe can best equip itself to continue to educate future generations. And if you feel these treasured moments fading, we encourage you to get back into the classroom and rediscover the mission at its closest point of contact <laughs> with the students. While you forge a new path as our president, you remain our lead teacher, and the faculty stand ready to support the mission of this institution. May you be fulfilled by this exceedingly difficult role, and may you find meaning in inspiring us all to never stop learning. Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sarah Pfaff, president of the Oglethorpe Alumni Association and a 2010 graduate. Woo! <laughs> um, it is an honor to represent the Oglethorpe alumni today at, at today's investiture. And on behalf of all the Stormy Petrels through the years, let me add our congratulations and best wishes. It's gratifying to see so many alumni here today, and I love that the alumni processional has representatives ranging from the class of 2024 to the class of 1958. <laughs> Dr. McClyman, you have a demanding job with many obstacles. I want to say to you now, in this moment, that you have the support of the Oglethorpe alumni. We will work alongside you and give back to Oglethorpe as you lead us into a bright future. As alumni, we have benefited from an Oglethorpe education. Upon graduation, we have continued striving to achieve our goals, equipped with knowledge and skills instilled in us by our faculty, both in and outside of the classroom. We charge you with ensuring that the next generation will, be, will have the opportunities we had to experience transformation. We charge you with calling on us when we can be of service, whether that be financially or with our time and expertise. And we charge you with carrying on our time-honored traditions and making us proud to be Stormy Petrel. In a few moments, there will be an oath of office administered by the chair of the Oglethorpe Board of Trustees. As you take that oath and say, I do, we, the alumni, will be saying, I do, with you, in our hearts. This is your moment, and we are with you. Thank you. I'm Bill Shropshire, a former interim uh, provost, a former trustee, and professor emeritus of economics. <laughs> it is frequently observed these days that in the market for college presidents there is what we economists would call a shortage. <laughs> that is, the number of slots available to be filled exceeds the number of persons who have the, the intelligence, the experience, the wisdom, and the courage to do the job. We are pleased to have in our midst such a person with these qualifications, Catherine McClyman. A native of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 
Dr. McClyman began her academic journey at Harvard University, where she received a bachelor's degree in history and literature. She went west to pursue her master's and PhD degrees at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where she became a, a scholar in religious studies and a specialist in uh, religious ritual. She was a member of the faculty at Georgia State, uh, moving through the ranks from assistant to full professor before she was tapped to be chair of the religious studies department. She came to Oglethorpe in uh, 2021 as provost, vice president for academic affairs, and professor of philosophy. In May of 2023, the board asked her to step in as interim president during a presidential transition. In its wisdom, the board removed the term interim from her title and made her the university's 18th president. I've had the opportunity to serve Oglethorpe as faculty member and trustee for 45 years. Today, it is an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be here to present Catherine McClyman for her investiture as president of the university. Dr. McClyman has articulated her vision for the immediate future of the university and into the longer term to the year 2035 for its uh, bicentennial celebration and beyond. Dr. McClyman, we are grateful to you and we are excited for you as the 18th president. We are fortunate today to have with us Ms. Martha Patillo, representing her father, Dr. Manning Patillo, who sadly passed away in June. Former First Lady Mrs. Barbara Stanton, representing her husband, Dr. Donald Stanton, who we lost in October of 2019. We have former President Dr. Larry Large and former President Dr. Lawrence Shaw. They will participate in the ceremonial passing of the University Mace, symbolizing the passage of leadership to Dr. McClyman. Dr. McClyman was unanimously elected president of Oglethorpe University by the Board of Trustees in November of 2023. Since assuming office, Dr. McClyman has proven to be the person to lead Oglethorpe University at this moment in time. The inauguration marshal, Dr. John Nardo, will now initiate the passing of the Oglethorpe University Mace, the symbol of authority, educational tradition, and distinction. President McClyman, may you carry forward the legacy of leadership and service as we continue to make a life, make a living, and make a difference.
exciting. Come, come here. Come closer. <laughs> so now I have the pleasure to administer the oath of office. Dr. McClyman, please raise your right hand and respond, I do, to the oath of office. Do you, Catherine McClyman, solemnly swear to faithfully execute the office of the president of Oglethorpe University and to the best of your ability, instruct, guide, and lead the university to fulfill its mission? I do. All right. <laughs> Woo! Dr. McClyman, by the authority vested in me by the Oglethorpe University Charter and the Board of Trustees, I hereby invest in you with the office of president of Oglethorpe University with all of the rights, privileges, and honors thereto appertaining. As a token of your investiture, I present to you the Presidential Medal, which is, uh, which is symbolic of the trust that we've placed in you by Oglethorpe University. This is awesome, huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is a scary part. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Dr. Catherine McClymond, 18th President of Oglethorpe University. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Tammy. Members of the Board of Trustees, Oglethorpe faculty, staff, and students, community leaders, dear friends, and my extraordinary family. As I started thinking about today, I remembered a moment from my childhood. Growing up, I attended a large public high school, and I was deeply involved in theater. The theater class took a trip to New York City to see shows on Broadway, and my mother came with us as a chaperone. It was fine, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, she brought a close friend named Rob and me to a theater to take us to see a musical we had both been dying to see. The theater only had one ticket left. My mother gave the ticket to my friend, and she and I did not attend. I don't remember what we did instead. I do remember I was not happy about this. <laughs> um, but mostly I remember her words to me. You, she said, will have lots of opportunities to see theater. I can guarantee that. But I don't know for sure that Rob will have that opportunity. So I'm going to make sure he gets that opportunity now. My friend Rob pursued a career in theater. And I like to think that my mother's actions in that moment played a small part in his professional path. I say frequently that higher education is a noble calling, a generous profession. Individuals who are bright and capable deliberately choose to pour their knowledge, passion, energy, and caring into other people's children. They deliberately choose to make life-changing opportunities available to complete strangers. Like my mother, who was a college professor and department chair herself, they assure opportunity for others. I have spent over 25 years in higher education because I believe that a life spent that way, a life dedicated to assuring opportunities for others, is the most meaningful life that I could lead. And at this moment in my career, and at this moment in local, national, and global history, I cannot imagine a better place to do that than Oglethorpe University.
Oglethorpe University, as everyone in this room knows, is a special place. Our mission statement says, Atlanta's Oglethorpe University is committed to teaching excellence in an inclusive learning environment. But every university, of course, talks about excellence. So what's so special about Oglethorpe? Well, what brought me to Oglethorpe and what compels me to serve now as its president is Oglethorpe's distinctive insight into the nature of excellence in higher education. First, at Oglethorpe, we understand that excellence develops one student at a time. It is a deeply personal experience. Academic excellence is nurtured and blossoms uniquely in each individual student. This is time and labor intensive, and we don't graduate the tens of thousands of students each year that other institutions graduate. For us, that's a good thing. We know that a personalized experience with deep community-wide investment in each individual student is life-changing. Second, at Oglethorpe, we understand that excellence comes in all shapes and sizes, informed by distinct personality types, passions, and experiences. It requires us to be a student-ready university, rather than asking each student to arrive college-ready in a singular cookie-cutter way, we accept the challenge to take each student as they are and prepare them for the future they cannot even imagine yet. At Oglethorpe, you can be truly, fully successful while being truly, fully, authentically yourself. Every student belongs here. And we continue to learn with each generation how to open our welcoming arms just a little bit wider so excellence is available to all. This celebration of each student's individuality has been part of our DNA for generations. Our core program, our unique general education program, begins with a required course entitled Narratives of the Self. While the course requires students to read about other people's lives, that's only the beginning. Our core, our core 101 class is a clarion call to new freshmen to be the authors of their own life stories. Contemporary culture pressures students to choose a role that fits in an already established worldview and then frames the college experience as something that prepares the student to fit into that world. Our core program, beginning with Core 101, upends that experience. It puts the individual human at the forefront as the architect of their own world, the author of their own story. We empower students to take a posture of self-determination envisioning the world they want to create and taking their rightful place as the author of their own life narrative, rather than becoming a minor character in someone else's storyline. Oglethorpe's graduates write their own unique life stories. Finally, at Oglethorpe, we understand that excellence is meant to be put into action to benefit the community, not just an individual. Remember, our mission statement begins with the phrase, Atlanta's Oglethorpe University. We were founded in 1835, and since 1915, we have been on this campus, an anchor to a thriving community that has grown up around us. Throughout its history, Oglethorpe leaders have shaped Atlanta. For example, our first woman board chair, Ms. Bell Turner Lynch, also founded and then served as president and as a board member of the Atlanta Alzheimer's Association, served on the board of directors of the Atlanta Speech School, and led a community effort to support historic preservation that ultimately led to the formation of the Buckhead Heritage Society. Most significantly, our alumni have helped to make Atlanta what it is today. I think of Francis Bemis, former writer for the Atlanta Constitution and the Atlanta Journal, and publicist for the Women's Club of Atlanta. Tim Tosopoulos, former president and COO of Chick-fil-A and chair of the Boys and Girls Club of Metro Atlanta. Of Cody Parton, recently appointed president of the Cox Family Office. Of Representative Darshan Kendrick and Representative Rural Roman, representing House Districts 95 and 97 respectively in the Georgia House of Representatives of the Honorable Christopher J. McFadden, a judge serving on the Georgia Court of Appeals since 2011. I could go on and on and on. 
Atlanta as we know it today does not exist without Oglethorpe. Excellent, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellence at Oglethorpe means impact, especially impact in Atlanta and across Georgia. Excellence that is nurtured one student at a time, excellence that is true to oneself, and excellence that has impact. That is the promise of Oglethorpe, and the world has never needed that promise more than at this moment in history. We live in a tumultuous world right now. Cultural, business, and governmental leaders need sharp minds, open hearts, and rolled up sleeves. Our local, state, and national communities in particular face challenges and opportunities. We live in a politically, socially, racially, and economically divided country, and Georgia reflects that. We also inherit a powerful civic and moral legacy, and we still bear the scars of social division while we build toward a better future. We face housing challenges, increasing economic disparities, and social upheaval with no overnight solutions in sight. But at the same time, Atlanta is poised for opportunity. For the 11th year in a row, Georgia has been recognized as the best state in the country for business. Recent polling indicates that Atlanta is the fourth most popular city in the country for new college graduates to move to. As of today, Atlanta ranks number two for soundstage space in the United States. And we are attracting tech, manufacturing, and data center business at a rapid clip. The Atlanta Opera has been recognized as one of the top 10 opera companies in the United States and is in the midst of a multi-year production of The Ring Cycle, never before offered in the Southeast. And in 2026, Atlanta will be on the international stage hosting the FIFA World Cup. The world is, yeah, <laughs> the world is on Atlanta's doors. And I believe that every university has a civic responsibility to produce the workforce necessary to drive our economic, cultural, and civic growth. But Oglethorpe has a higher calling. Oglethorpe is called to be a force for holistic leadership in Atlanta and Georgia. Where will the innovative leaders for business growth come from? I say, from Oglethorpe. Where will the civic leadership for social reform come from? I say, from Oglethorpe. And where will the creative leadership for film, theater, music, and athletics come from? Again, I say, from Oglethorpe. Over 80% of our Oglethorpe students come from Georgia, and over 80% of our students stay in Georgia. Oglethorpe embraces today's challenge and will do its part to produce the globally informed and locally dedicated leadership force that Atlanta needs to thrive. Oglethorpe was founded almost 200 years ago. In the years to come, we will steward the DNA of our community, an abiding commitment to academic excellence, and a personalized experience for every student with a keen awareness of the historical moment we inhabit, an openness to drawing on cutting edge pedagogical strategies to support student academic and personal success, and a commitment to teaching students how to apply their subject matter expertise for the greater good, not just their own personal gain. My focus over the coming years will be to serve Atlanta, Georgia, and the Southeast well by serving our students well. We will do this by maintaining our traditional commitment to the liberal arts and empowering our students with new liberal arts skills, digital fluency, climate literacy, intercultural competence, and high stakes, high conflict leadership skills. Our investment in them is an investment in Atlanta's future, Georgia's future, and our national and global fellowship. My vision is that when we celebrate our 200th anniversary in 2035, Oglethorpe will be rightfully recognized as Atlanta's premier undergraduate learning experience. Atlanta, because we embrace our history and position in this amazing city, informed by a global perspective while committed to this city, state, and country. An undergraduate 
because we are committed to transforming lives at that magic moment when students take ownership of their adult lives. I won't lie, to provide the environment that fosters student success isn't easy. The work of higher education faces tough headwinds these days, especially when we want to make a college degree available at an affordable cost to families. Creating opportunities for others involves hard, sustained work, work that our dedicated faculty, staff, alumni, and board of trustees members contribute daily, often in unseen ways. But can you imagine anything more meaningful than dedicating your life to the next generation? For me, this is the secret gift of Oglethorpe. Our motto, make a life, make a living, make a difference, is usually interpreted as a challenge to our students. But I hear it more broadly. Make a life, make a living, make a difference is an invitation to all of us here today. Oglethorpe invites all of us to participate in this audacious act of generosity that is higher education, the offering of opportunity to complete strangers. I look back on that afternoon decades ago when my mother created an opportunity for one teenaged boy. She did that intentionally, but she also created another opportunity unintentionally, one for me, by including me in her act of generosity. She gave me a glimpse of what it means to live a life considering others and putting that consideration into action. I am honored today to join the generations of Oglethorpe faculty, staff, alumni, and presidents who have chosen to leave a legacy of generosity. Thank you for this privilege. is so bright. Catherine will follow you anywhere. <laughs> Thank you. What a wonderful vision. What a wonderful words of hope for all of us. And thank you to the Oglethorpe community for being here today to celebrate this historic moment for Oglethorpe and for Dr. McClyman. If you will now rise and join the Oglethorpe University singers in the alma mater. I'm sorry. The words are printed in your program? Yes, Dan, sorry. <laughs> Everybody, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I stay. Okay, I'm kind of new to this stage, but so. Um, at the conclusion of the alma mater, you may take your seats for the duration of the recessional. When the recessional has ended, we invite all of you to join Dr. McClymond and her family for lunch on the quad. Again, to our friends, donors, alumni, trustees, faculty, and staff who made this event possible. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. <laughs>